Every time the earth shake is when you feeling me speak I don't try to talk too much but the feeling is deep Where your heart at? We coming from the bottom where the dark at Crabs in the blanket so they mad when you spark that So I got a spark back to pump make your head shake My rap like a gold mine, studying my dope rhymes Ross rap in the game, it's like I'm stiff and cold blind Sell pop and mobs, living like monsters I'm too nice, rap on cue like it's the Oscars Loosen all your hair, Joe, think you need Rogaine Joe button, Joe booty, what the fuck is your name? Police coming by with the tape and cameras Lost too many men to the tape and cameras I'm young but I'm ready, Jack I dare you to come back I won cause I am rap You would think how many died It was set an example But nobody even cared Just another example Performing at cafes You're still underground How you go mainstream And run back underground Joe Button, you're a clown Lil B taught me that There are others That are just That are just different They just are different Brandon Christopher McCartney, a.k.a. Lil B, born August 17, 1989. Lil B was not ahead of his time. He was at the perfect time. I hear many people explain the problem with Lil B, and they always state the skin of what the bass god really meant to music and the world. Yes, looking at what hip-hop has become, where being yourself is the it thing, you don't have to act cool, aggressive, promiscuous, or even dress nice. You can just be positively who you are, can all be credited to a spawn of Lil B. But that doesn't mean you can just re-era him and have better results. There's no question many hip-hop young stars that popped off in the 2010s took something from what Lil B was doing and made it their own. Even if as small as just taking a camera, going outside, doesn't matter where it is, and creating. Put that on the most powerful tool on the planet and you too could become a star. Yes, Lil B made that hot. But for the same reasons many love Lil B and think he was ahead of his time is the exact reasons I feel he wouldn't have become any of that had he come out later. The thing about being first to do something is one, you become love for it, even if you don't become the most known or even the best to do it. You did it first, took all the arrows, so you will be immortalized forever, and Lil B will. Two is after you've shown the path, everyone starts to take that path and saturate it until someone finds another one. That's why had Lil B come out today, he'd be seen as not only a follower, which takes away from the genius of Lil B, but his music would be seen as a lesser version of whoever did it before him. Because let's be honest, Lil B technically is not a good rapper. Not that you need to be to be a legend, and that's why Lil B is a legend in hip-hop, only because he did it first. Now moving past that into why I made this video about the three things that stunted his growth. Based on everything said earlier, Lil B could have been way bigger than what he became or what he is now. None of these features are to ever say the artist isn't important, influential, or dope at what they do. But because I've noticed the immense talent they had, I saw what their star could have been in the confines of society and what the masses like and champion. In the troll era, as I like to call it, that we've been in, where the worse it is, the more attention it can get, if packaged correctly, Lil B had enough influence, charisma, smarts, courage, and opportunity to change the world, possibly for the better. Not that that's definite, and not because his music was always a pillar of righteousness, but because he was early, he was first, he was influential, and he wanted to, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Lil B is a Bay Area rapper from Berkeley, California that began rapping at 15. By 17, on December 19, 2006, he released the first thing he ever went viral on, a song called Vans by his former group The Pack. From about 2004 to 2010, there was a phenomenon called the hyphy movement that originally began in the late 90s in Oakland was at its peak when that song dropped and blew the pack up. The group soon disbanded and are known as one hit wonders today. What emerged from those ashes was the opener of that song Lil B. 
Of course, after the pact, he had completely immersed himself in the enigmatic, sort of spiritual, troll, wise man that he represents now. He taught the world to go against the nice button-ups Jay-Z was trying to make cool or the matching colors Fabulous and everybody else was on and just be yourself. If you're dusty and been wearing the same sneakers and jeans for days because your grind can't afford new ones, then f*** it. Be base. Be basic. Home plate. A base god. Own and dominate your truth. He also taught the world to cook. Stunt number one, suckers do sucker-ish. Not related to Lil B because we both got punched in the face. Seriously, that was a big thing back then when Lil B got punched in the face. Since Lil B went solo and released his first bodies of work in 2009, his star began to rise tremendously. He'd do spontaneous things like just turn the camera on and walk down the street rapping and it started to become the coolest thing ever or wear a dirty pair of Vans he's had for years everywhere, as he says, until he makes a million dollars. His fans mostly got hip to who Lil B was, hated his music so much that it made them cry laughing right before sharing it with a friend and another friend and that friend to four more friends and that's exactly what the genius of the internet and social tools like YouTube are intended for. The thing is, no one knew back in 2009 that when you do that and think you're clowning someone, you're actually promoting them as their very own street team. The new streets, YouTube, social media. He quickly became popular, then because of how serious he took himself, people listened closely and began to as well. Some furthered the troll by becoming cult-like followers of his music and nothing he put out was bad. Even though that's exactly Lil B's appeal, mostly bad music mixed with high levels of positivity, confidence and encouragement from a guy just being himself. They accepted him and was just about to hold him up to the world as the new greatest hip hop discovery. Then a sucker punched him during an interview, well, a faked, planned interview and Lil B lost some of his steam. If you don't get why, it's usually your own holding you back and the crabs in the bucket that never want to see you make it out, you won't understand why a sucker punched a single greatest representative of his hometown that went to the same schools and could have used Lil B's help, sacrificed that for a piece of internet fame. Nevertheless, I remember when that happened and honestly, for a while after, Lil B wasn't the same. In 2010, getting punched in the face was still a big deal in hip-hop that took away from your appeal, even if a sucker did it. Charles Hamilton was punched in the face by a girl just months earlier and his career hadn't been the same since. Having to take time off to heal physically and emotionally from what happened and the era we were in hurt Lil B for the first time. Stunt number two, the Lil B brand not evolving. Even though he was on the bad end of a sucker punch, Lil B still had a sizable amount of influence and was still great for the era he was in before all the cool street rappers became, well, cool. But I can't help but think as far as everything Lil B had to offer, led by sheer charisma, he should have evolved past still being known as the rapper not known for much than the cooking dance or an alleged curse he puts on people most notably James Harden and Kevin Durant. Lil B should be a leader in some way within the game by now, dropping positive jewels on a mass stage on the regular. That or shit, a legit cult leader on his own farm, sanctioned by the government, who provide him his own personal army, physical trainer, and weekend White House access to throw parties or whatever being based does. Instead, he's barely remembered by fans of today and still seems like he never really got on. Besides that, Lil B is the exact rapper that needed a label. 
he had everything needed in the troll era, but what he didn't have was someone to put that all together and package it to where it could sell correctly to his cult fans and as a representation of hip hop. Yes, he had some small label distribution deals and was once signed to probably the worst rapper you could sign to in the ultra-narcissistic Soldier Boy who couldn't possibly have the time to groom Lil B, instead used his clout and became the mainstream version of him to further his survival. But Lil B has never had what he needed in a major label to put him in a space he needed to flourish to color in the lines and present his picture the right way. It's another missed evolution of Lil B. He literally had viral hits like Like a Martian, Wonton Soup, Pretty Bitch, I'm God, all of which were released for free and didn't capitalize on the evolution each could have given him. Stunt number three, too many Lil Bs. And finally, what happens when you have a great idea, but you don't evolve and someone comes behind you, copies you, and does it better? You become stuck and lose attention because people want to hear different, new, growth. The things Lil B did well, another generation of cloud rappers or SoundCloud rappers came behind and fused that with a cooler image, better, more sensible bars, and took over his lane. He was one of the first rappers on YouTube doing cloud rap as they now call it. Why didn't that last? Because many came along, saw the lane, and did it better. Also, social media evolved, which made those rappers look even crispier in that light, and Lil B was just lost. You don't go from seeing Lil Baby with a money phone and neck pain worth of chains to Lil B still wearing those vans or even worse. Too many imitators or geniuses in their own right became what Lil B didn't evolve into. And at this point, I think all Lil B will ever be known for is the guy that started it. He should be the guy that profited most, did it best, and still has a following that he doesn't need to speak on a track and it'll still go platinum. That's the character he could have created. Yet, where's Lil B? You rarely see or hear from him, and that's exactly what his imitators are good at. All in all, Lil B can still call himself a legend because he is. His work ethic is impeccable, known for dropping hours-long projects, sometimes up to 7 hours, and once put out 16 mixtapes in one year. Yes, they may be stream of consciousness, meaningless flows, but at least he's creating. He still has almost the same aura about him, but it never leads to sales. Is it because his music is terrible? Maybe. Yet still, Lil B should be a lot bigger than he became. But for these reasons, his growth was stunning. Shaboy JC, stunted growth music. Salute to Lil B. Much respect. I'm out. I bow down to the bass guard. That's my nigga. Lil B for Lil Boss, Ross, rapper, live.